out of Iran, sentencing of human rights lawyer to 30 years in prison and 111 lashes is a shocking injustice. Responding to the news that Iranian human rights lawyer Ms. Saler Devoudi um, has been sentenced to 30 years in prison and 111 lashes for his human rights work, including publicizing violations through a channel he set up on Telegram, which is a mobile messaging app, and giving media interviews. Amnesty International's research and advocacy director for the Middle East and North Africa, Philip Luther, said this is shockingly harsh. This is a shockingly harsh sentence, and it's an outrageous injustice. He is blatantly being punished for his work defending human rights. With this sentence, Iran's authorities have demonstrated that human rights lawyers in Iran today are effectively treated as enemies of the state and that the authorities will go to any lengths to deny individuals in detention access to justice. And this seems to be an ongoing uh, a thing. I think that Armin and I have actually touched on this before mm. um, with the crackdown. They're saying that there's been a vicious crackdown waged by the Iranian authorities against human rights lawyers for the past two years. Um, and it's not just, you know, human rights lawyers. It's actually been journalists um, and, and a lot of other people in fields that might feel like reporting the truth about what's going on in Iran. They have been cracking down, and it seems like you know these increasingly harsh sentences uh, are being are being given to them to stop them from being able to carry out their work. Yeah, this is actually uh, something that is very it's very dangerous in, in Iran to be a lawyer. I mean, I mean, so here's what happens: you arrest somebody for no good reason. And then they hire a lawyer to defend you, and then they put the lawyer in prison. Like so, like a lot of these lawyers are like more brave than I ever would be because they're going out trying to get people out of prison, knowing that their attempt at trying to get somebody out of prison doing their job could actually get them in a cell for themselves right next to them. Right. Absolutely. So every time they're presenting a case to the court and using the own like these people are so these these Iranian lawyers, some of them are so clever, and they they're trying to use the country's own laws, like their their own constitution and everything. They're like, look, based on this laws in our own country and everything, like please judge, like this guy has to go, he should be free. He ha like based on our own laws, he should be able to, he, he shouldn't have been arrested without without this, without that. He hasn't been able to speak to a lawyer for this many days. Based on our own laws, he should have access to a lawyer. And he's making all these cases to the judge. And then tomorrow, the next day, they come to his house and they arrest him and put him in prison. And they know that this could happen to him. And they still go and try to fight for... I mean, I don't know how, how brave these people could be. This guy got 30 years in prison. And it's weird. They got 111 lashes. That's oddly specific. Um, Very oddly but, specific. I yeah. Think. Like this, this judge must have been like had a sense of humor. I don't know what the hell is wrong. But anyways, this um, they 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 do this. It's not like they do this and they all of a sudden get a thirty year prison and they're like, oh my god, I didn't see this coming. They knew that this could happen to them, and they're still doing what they're doing. Like it's it's, it's amazing. I don't know how they do how what can what convinces people like this that they need to fight for other people's rights even though they could lose it because of it right i don't understand how cause, because i'm not that brave honestly i will tell you i admit it right now if i was in iran i wouldn't be doing what this guy is doing like well, and it's yeah. yeah it's it's also it's happening in other places too such as pakistan and egypt you and i have reported on those stories before uh you know for people who are wondering like why is it so dangerous like armin said in iran they can be uh sentenced right alongside the person they're trying to defend in pakistan they can literally be killed especially if they're defending like an atheist or something like that um and in egypt they have uh, been been murdered so it's uh it's dangerous because it's not just the government that seeks mm. to hurt these people it's also extremists within the country that don't like uh the bad people being defended and so they they go after the lawyer it's dangerous from a government perspective and it's dangerous from a social perspe perspective you know nothing's not you know it's it's what's very ironic is that iran then dares go out in the world and say that they actually support human rights you know they they say like nothing says we support human rights more than putting human rights lawyers in prison for 30 years and giving them lashes. Like, I know. And who's going to represent this guy? Like, this guy is going to... Like, the, the sad thing about this is that he probably has to represent himself because he's not going to... A lot of these people are going to have very... 
I know there are these heroes like this, and there, are, but there's not a lot of them, right? Because a lot of these people in prison, like Sohel Arabi and people like them, they can't find lawyers because the lawyers are like, you think I'm suicidal? Like why? Like a lot of them are like, you know, listen, I have, I have a family, I have mouths to feed, I can't support my family if I'm in prison. So they arrest these people and they put them in prison, and they want to find lawyers and they can't. It's hard for them to find even e anyone brave enough to represent them. And the, the I mean, yeah. Isn't it isn't it true that in Iran, like you have to be a citizen of Iran, a lawyer there? Like, yeah. we couldn't we couldn't send somebody to be a lawyer for him, correct? No, I don't. No, no. Okay. I mean, so I just want to point because a lot of people are saying, well, Amnesty International is on this case, so obviously he's going to have a ton of lawyers, but that's what, actually not of, the case. Which, uh, like, yeah, if uh, what a lawyer that would be able to go to co Iranian court and represent him? No, right? Because they're not from there they have to have so I, I want, they have to I have the certificate they have the, they have to have the proper certifications to be able to go in a court iranian court um what the amnesty international could do is just bring enough attention to this to maybe put political pressure on your on iran to to embarrass iran enough to feel like oh maybe you know maybe bring it from 111 lashes to 60 lashes and instead of 30 years give him 15 years like that's the kind of stuff that groups like Amnesty International can do, but they can't actually go in and run and represent him in court. Uh, Moose is saying, if you cannot be a human rights lawyer in Iran, is there now no hope for change? This is so upsetting to me. I mean, well, there, I mean, there's always hope for change. I mean, people, um, I mean, pe there are still other human rights lawyers in Iran. Uh, I'm sure they're extremely scared right now, uh, but it's not a fun job to have and it's amazing for me that people still decide to become human rights lawyers i mean the, we the, we have had news like this about human rights lawyers in iran before and we still have human rights lawyers so people have decided to continue doing this even knowing the risks so it's not like this is going to be the end of having human rights lawyers so i'm saying but yeah but i i i i, I, I share your concern moose so I'm saying, what's with the 111 lashes? What's so important to them about the, that number? I have seen that number quite often when Islamic government sends his people to lashes. Oh, you have? I haven't noticed that, Sopam. That's very interesting. I have no idea. That is interesting. I have noticed, uh, you know, different amounts of lashings. Like, for instance, uh, Nasrin so today uh, was a 38 year old who was sentenced to six months in prison and 148 lashes for prompting uh, international outcry. Um, they they actually uh, sentenced her to 17 years um, mm. to serve in prison. But they what I think that where they th I think they get that number from uh, are all these odd number lashings. Like why why 148 lashings instead of is it 150? A, it, somebody look up Quran verse 111. To see if it has anything to do with see that. if it has anything to do with it. But I think that it actually has to do with the amount of. Uh, maybe like messages that he has sent through the telegram or uh, things of that nature. Like they're very specific about what they'll Surah. delve out. Maybe one of the surahs, 111, I don't know. Um, somebody looked at us, uh, looked that up and tell us. Moose is saying, shouldn't the UN step in here? Well, they should. I don't know if they would. GV is saying, has political pressure ever worked? Yeah, it has. And save someone like this. Yes, it has. Um, wait, wait, what was his name? Oh my God, I forgot his name. Saudi Arabia or secular bot logger. Um, what the hell? How could I forget this guy's name? I'm so embarrassed. Hold on. Um, Saudi secular blogger. Sorry, there's so many cases. I keep something. Raif Badawi. Raif, 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 uh, Raif Badawi's uh, lashing stopped in Saudi Arabia because of uh, um, international pl pressure. There are some people that... People make fun of like online petitions. There are prisoners that were actually completely freed from prison because of giant petition. Here's how it works, right? Most petitions don't work, okay? Most petitions don't work, but enough of them work for it to make it worth trying. Most petitions don't work. Enough of them work for it to be worth trying. Uh, what they, what this, the way it works is that it's, this is usually how it works. If enough people talk about it,
enough people share it on social media and online petitions and stuff like that then some news organizations start noticing that oh this is interesting this is interesting to people and then some news get some news coverage then goes to the political uh, you know the politicians enough politicians notice that some new something is getting news coverage They're like oh maybe my uh, my constituents care about this. Maybe this is something that if I put pressure on a, another country on, then I can get some more votes in the next election. So then they will put pressure on the co country that is like, oh, we are against Iran because of doing this. And then Iran, a country like Iran or Saudi Arabia or North Korea or somebody notices like, oh, they're using this uh, as a way to um you know make a move against me here or make a move against me there so maybe i could try to reduce the sentence here to just reduce some uh, attention on this case so it does sometimes work okay not always uh, but it works so i was saying sharif uh, no, sharif uh, jabber no sharif is in egypt um not saudi arabia but sharif's case hasn't worked egypt is actually has proven to be very uh, desensitized to political international pressure. Egypt is one of the worst places right now for you to get arrested because apparently they don't give a shit how much international pressure you put on them. Uh, even Saudi Arabia has shown to... Saudi Arabia especially right now is in such a, a strategically weak position ever since um, they killed that Kuchikji guy that political pressure is working on Saudi Arabia more than it used to. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Sopam is <laughs> uh, oh, Sopam is saying Quran 11, 111. Well, 111, which surah? Um, is a story about Abu Lahab. I don't know, Abu Lahab was just a bad guy. Um, uh, Will Philly is saying what uh, surah? I don't, I don't know if I was just guessing, I'm not sure. Think I don't know if it's that somebody look, figure out what it is. Uh, surah 100, uh, verse 11. Um, okay, so people are looking up Quranic verses. That's very interesting. Inform concerning them. I don't. I, I was just guessing. I don't know what it is, guys. Um, but we'll we'll find, we'll see if we can find that. Iran. Moose is saying Iran should go back to the times before the Iranian Revolution. Uh, B is saying can't find what Armin was. Just got something about man cursed and a woman carrying stakes. Yeah, Abu Lahab was somebody that Muhammad really hated. So he cursed him in the Quran. <laughs> one of the one of the few people that was mentioned, uh, him and his wife, one of the few people that was mentioned by name in the Quran that lived at Muhammad's time. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.